Hey everybody, Adam O'Hearn here, aka the Cad Junkie, and today, my friends, we are going to talk about the brand spanking new public beta of Onshape just out today. That's March 9th, 2015, and uh, I am excited to show you folks around. Now, uh, the first place you're going to be is My Documents, and you're going to want to click on one of these demo files that's probably going to be there sitting for you. Hang on just one second. As we open this up, uh, the first thing is it's called a document which I think is misleading. That's a misnomer, okay? This is not really a document, at least not in the desktop sense of the word. This is not a file. It's actually a folder. It's a, uh, think of it as a project directory containing all of your project files. That includes your CAD files, but also your images, PDFs, zip files, uh, interchange files, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm going to click on this project directory to open it up, and that's going to uh, jump me straight into a big, beautiful 3D viewport that I can start using right away, and since it's so tempting, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to right mouse drag in the viewport to rotate the view. Now, this is trackball rotation, very much like any other mechanical CAD system. If you're coming from another system like Rhino or Maya that has gravity built in, or Alias for that matter, then uh, this is going to feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable at first. Don't worry, you'll get used to it. Now, uh, right mouse to rotate. You can middle mouse to drag if you have one, and that's going to uh, pan your view. Now, uh, if you don't have a middle mouse, uh, first of all, get one. Uh, and, uh, but uh, in the meantime, you can hold control and right drag to do that as well. Now, if you are a tablet user like myself, uh, Cintiq or Wacom uh, tablet user, you can uh, map the middle mouse button to one of your uh, stylus buttons, and that works really well. That's what I've done. So, right mouse to rotate, middle mouse to pan, and then uh, on the desktop, zooming is uh, done usually with a scroll wheel. I'll bet 90% of you are going to do that, and uh, it always zooms toward your mouse, which is kind of nice. So, just point at the thing you want to look at and uh, scroll to zoom in on it. Now, if you are working on a mobile device like uh, an iPad or an iPhone, which you can do in on shape, you're going to pinch to zoom, which is uh, pretty cool in itself. And then uh, finally, uh, if you are working on a tablet like me, then you are SOL, at least uh, with regard to interactive zooming. Uh, but what you can do instead is use the Z key, Z as in zebra, to zoom out, or you can shift Z to zoom in. Kind of lame, I know, but that's what we've got for the moment. Don't worry, I am working on them. Uh, I'm hoping to get something like that in the not too distant future. Let's hit the F key to zoom fit. And uh, definitely remember that one as well. Just like any CAD system, it's pretty easy to zoom way out uh, and, uh, you know, pan off to where you've lost your model or whatever. If that happens, just hit that F key. It's going to bring you back and uh, you're back in business. Now, you may be tempted to use this little view cube at the top right of the screen. And uh, for reasons that I don't want to go into right now, I'm going to recommend that you not do that. Instead of using the view cube, I'm going to recommend you use keyboard shortcuts to get to your standard views. Uh, to look at those, head up to your help menu and down to keyboard shortcuts. Click on that. It's going to show you a nice list with lots of useful things that you should know. Right here in the middle, you're going to see all of the standard views. That's shift one through seven, which is uh, analogous to sh uh, control one through seven on SOLIDWORKS. And uh, so it should be pretty quick to get used to that. Now, um, unfortunately, that's a long reach for your fingers. It's a little hard to do. Uh, what I do is put my pinky finger, my little finger, on the shift key and then use my long fingers <laughs> to uh, access the numbers one through seven. And uh, if those don't work for you, you can, of course, always just mainly interactive navigate. That's what I do for the most part. Okay, so now that you're interacting in 3D space, let's just take a break from 3D for a minute, okay? I know it's really exciting and everything, but there are some things to look at here that might not be immediately apparent. First of all, at the bottom, we have a bunch of tabs, horizontal tabs. Now, that might seem a little bit odd. Uh, why, why, why horizontal tabs? Well, that's how Onshape wants you to navigate between your various documents in your project. The problem with that is that you cannot close them. Any document that exists in your project will always be open in your tabs, which means that if you have more than five or six, uh, five or six different files in your project, then you are quickly going to need more space. You just can't read them down there. That's why you have this button over here on the left called Select Tab. Pop that up, and you have a vertical list of your tabs. And if you right-click any of those, you have the same context menu that you would have if you right-clicked a tab. Okay, so uh, the first thing about using Onshape that I want you to know is that uh, you shouldn't really bother with the tabs, to be honest. They're just hard to read, in my opinion, and you're going to find that the vertical list is much more useful, especially when you get into using larger projects. Take my word for it. Make it muscle memory. Just come over here and use this to get to those. 
Okay, now um, notice here that we have lots of different types of things. We have up here, of course, an assembly, which is just like an assembly in any other mechanical CAD system. We have part files, which are just like multi-body part files in any other multi-body part uh, compatible CAD system. And down here we have some image files. Like I said, we could also have PDFs or uh, video files. There are all kinds of things that we could put into a project. If I click on this JPEG, for instance, it's going to open up that file so that I can look at it. So let me go back uh, to that fuel valve, open it up, and let's look at the rest of our screen. Over here on the left, we have our assembly tree, uh, including all of the various parts uh, that are in the assembly. And at the bottom, we have all of our mating constraints that bring things together in Onshape. Now, mating in Onshape is ostensibly very similar to other CAD packages, but it's also a little bit different, and it has some really nice possibilities for the future. If you're used to mating in SolidWorks, then Onshape is going to feel a little bit different, but still pretty straightforward. If you're used to mating in Fusion 360, then Onshape is going to feel very familiar because there are a lot of similar concepts. We'll come to that in a tutorial later on. Okay, up the top here we have uh, all of our assembly related tools. This bar here is where you're going to see tools pertaining to whatever document happens to be open. And uh, up in the very top bar we have some pretty self-explanatory stuff, but I do want to point out a few interesting tidbits. First of all, notice to the right of the file name we have a main uh, word. That main word refers to the current version branch that we're working on. So if you're a coder, then you uh, know what GitHub is, of course, and you know that in GitHub, when you create an open source project, other people can branch your project to create their own versions of it. And then eventually, if they do something really cool, you could even merge your project back together with theirs. Well, the same thing is true here. If I click over here, then I actually have access to all of the various versions and branches of my file. So I could have many engineers working on different branches of the same uh, project and then eventually merge them back together to create a final result. Very, very cool stuff and I'm looking forward to seeing how that ends up getting used in the real world. In addition to that, we also have a file history or workspace history. If I click on this, it's going to show me what is essentially an undo stack. Think of this as a nearly infinite uh, undo stack where I can go back and back and back and back and uh, if I click on any state here in my undo stack, up at the top I will have uh, the uh, option to restore that to the current version. So over here on the right, once it finishes loading, you'll see this is what the file looked like way back then, which is pretty much the same, but still, you get the idea. I could restore this to the current version if I decided that I wanted to go back, or I can just return to main to get back to my, uh, you know, most recent uh, version of the file. Okay, now uh, one other thing that I want to show you here that's, uh, well, actually there are two things in the header that are maybe not immediately apparent that are awesome. First and foremost, go to, your, uh, go to your login menu here. Let's go to Manage Account. Go to Settings, and you want to set your default unit length. It's going to be inches by default, which makes me want to shoot people in the face. So <laughs> let's avoid that and just change it to something you want to use. In my case, millimeters. That's going to work really well for me. You can use whatever you like, and uh, nothing against you if you want to use inches. That's fine. I just won't talk to you. That's okay. I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, once I have that, to get back to my main menu, I can click on the Onshape logo here, and I'm going to open my project back up. Now, back in my project, the other thing I want to show you that's up here in this header bar menu that may not be immediately obvious is, uh, let's say, for example, that uh, I'm having an issue right here, and uh, this screw is giving me some problems. It's not behaving the way that I want it to. There's a funny geometry error in it. So I'm going to go up here to my Help menu, drop it down, and go down to feedback. This might be my favorite feature in Onshape, folks, because as you know, I am uh, not timid or quiet about when I have problems with things, and uh, Onshape makes it easy for me to complain, which is great. So if you have an issue, this is beta software, folks, and they want to fix it. They are hungry for, bit, for bugs to fix. So if you have a bug, click that button. Come here. You can actually uh, find, let's choose a red color. I'm going to circle whatever the problem was. I'm going to come over here and uh, click the comment button. Let me click right here and say, I'm having trouble with this. And I apparently need to learn to type. There we go. And then we'll come down here, type a title. My title. This is my problem. And then I would click uh, send. And what that's going to do is uh, submit this to the, uh, to the QA department. 
And once the QA department gets it, if it is a bug, then what they'll do is actually submit that to the uh, bug reporting uh, system where you will then be notified of updates having to do with that bug. If they have a question about it, they'll ask you. And once the bug is fixed, they'll send you a notification saying, hey, your bug was fixed. It's really cool and really gratifying. So if you have a problem, let them know so that they can fix it. It's going to be very cool stuff. I'm very excited about this feature. I'm going to cancel this. Yes, I want to discard that note. And we're back off and running. Okay, so um, over here on the left, like I said, we've got our feature tree. If I come here to a uh, part studio, we have the, uh, the equivalent of what you would see in SOLIDWORKS. We have our toolbar at the top with all the various solid modeling tools that you would expect for very basic prismatic modeling. There's not a lot of surfacing yet, but it's on the way. And over here on the left, we have uh, what is really a very straightforward feature tree. We have an origin, we have some default planes, top, front, right, and then we have our feature tree. Now, there are no icons or colors or anything yet to help you navigate this feature tree. I believe uh, some of that kind of stuff is on the way, or so I've been told. So I'm hoping that uh, that's going to get better over time. Also down here at the bottom, we have a parts list. Now, don't let this confuse you. Now, if you're coming from, say, SOLIDWORKS, parts exist in assemblies, right? And bodies exist in parts, right? A, uh, I guess a part is to an assembly as a body is to a part. Well, in Onshape, a part studio is to an assembly as a part is to a part studio if that makes any sense at all. I hope that didn't just throw you completely for a loop. But anyway, it's really just, it's pure semantics, folks. This is a multi-body part. You can work in a multi-body part if you want, or you can separate your parts into separate part studios, however you prefer to work. I happen to be a separate part studio kind of guy. I really don't like doing multi-body parts because I find it difficult to manage. Really quickly, your feature list gets too long and it's very hard to, to work with. So I prefer to work in lots of different part studios. But if you want to work in one, that's fine. That's on you, however you want to do it. Okay, so that is, uh, that's the basics of Onshape, folks. I mean, that's, that's the basic overview, anyway. It's very cool stuff. You can have huge assemblies in here. They work extremely well. You'll be really surprised um, how well it works from a performance standpoint. I also want to point out a couple of technical issues. The first one is that uh, this is full parasolid-based CAD, people. This is parasolid running in the cloud, which is an incredible technical accomplishment because parasolid was designed for desktops. But not only that, that means that your stuff is super compatible with other parasolid-based systems like NX, like, uh, like um, uh, SOLIDWORKS, you know, so you can share your files with other CAD systems very easily. Second thing that is super important to note here is that Onshape employees cannot see your data. They cannot get to your data without your permission. You have to share it with them explicitly in order for them to be able to see it. And uh, that's really important to know, since most of us are working on secret files that really uh, can't be shared without an NDA in place. So, definitely uh, cool stuff to know. Okay, so one last thing before I let you go. Uh, on Shape, over here on the left, we do have a tutorials and samples section with lots of tutorials. And if I open up one of these projects, you'll see that not only is there a PDF built in uh, right here, we have a PDF viewer built in to On Shape. There are videos built in as well. And you could upload your own videos to your own projects, by the way. Keep that in mind. And then you can go in and actually, uh, you know, follow along with the tutorial in the, uh, in the project files themselves. Okay, so uh, this is cool stuff, everybody. I'm very excited about Onshape. I can't wait to get into it, and I can't wait to see how it grows and changes over the next uh, next few days, weeks, months, years. It's going to be fantastic. Very cool stuff. I am uh, looking forward to hearing what you think about it, and uh, in the following videos to this one, we will be walking through an actual tutorial, building some stuff, having a good time. All right, talk to you soon. We'll see you.